Today, we are going to take a closer look at physical science and the scientific method. As always, before beginning any experiment in the laboratory, be sure you are familiar with laboratory safety requirements. For a demonstration of basic lab safety rules, you can watch our video entitled Lab Safety. Physical science is the study of the physical and chemical properties of matter and energy. Some of the physical properties of matter include mass, volume, density, solubility, melting and boiling points, and physical composition. Chemical properties include chemical stability, reactivity, combustibility, and molecular composition. Physical science also includes a study of how matter and energy interact. In our study of energy, we will discover how the physical laws of motion, thermodynamics, and gravity affect matter. We will also explore the atom and discover what causes certain chemical substances to react with each other at the atomic level. Physical science is about problem solving, using scientific concepts and principles to answer questions about the physical world around us. If you are presented with a complicated problem, what steps do you take to solve it? When scientists have problems to solve, or when they are confronted with observable evidence they cannot explain, they employ a useful procedure called the scientific method. The scientific method is a logical procedure that follows an orderly progression of steps to solve a problem or to explain a phenomenon. Let's use the scientific method to help us identify an unknown substance. The first step in the scientific method is identify the problem. To use the scientific method, we must first recognize a problem exists and then state the problem in clear and concise terms. Asking a question helps us focus on the purpose of our investigation. In this case, the problem is the fact that we do not know the identity of this substance. The obvious question is, what is this substance? Now that we have identified the problem, we can perform the next step of the scientific method, collect data about the problem. In this step, data is collected by observation, research, and experimentation. However, the order of these three steps vary with the nature of the problem. In this situation, we begin with observation and then follow with research and experimentation. Observation involves things we personally observe. Scientists often use tools such as microscopes, telescopes, stethoscopes, and thermometers to make observations. Let's use our stereo microscope to examine the crystals more closely. Upon close inspection, we observe that this substance consists of hard blue crystals. After making observations, we conduct some research. Research is the data collected by reading things others have discovered relating to the problem. Research can include books, papers, and articles written on the subject by others. Now we move on to experimentation, which involves a set of tests to help us arrive at a conclusion. During our experimentation, we test the substance for solubility, pH, and density. To determine the solubility of the substance, we find the maximum amount of the substance, the solute, that will dissolve in an amount of water, the solvent. Measured amounts of the solute are added to the solvent and the mixture is stirred. We keep adding solute and stirring until no more solute will dissolve. We discover that the maximum amount of solute that dissolves in 250 milliliters of water is 78.7 grams. This means that the solubility of the substance in water is 314.8 grams per liter. We also try to dissolve the substance 
in an organic solvent, such as acetone. After adding the solute to the solvent and stirring, we conclude that the substance is not soluble in acetone. Now, let's test the pH of the solution formed by dissolving the substance in water. We determine pH with a pH meter. The pH of the solution is 4.0, which is acidic. Now, we find the density of the substance. Density is an expression of the mass of a substance in relation to its volume. We use a balance to measure the mass of the substance. There are equations to help us find the volume of a solid with a regular shape, such as a rectangular prism or a cylinder. But how do we determine the volume of something with an irregular shape? The volume of an irregular solid can be found by fluid displacement. Fluid displacement is the process of finding the volume of a substance by measuring the amount of fluid it displaces. Since the substance does not dissolve in acetone, we can use acetone for fluid displacement. This graduated cylinder contains exactly 5.0 milliliters of acetone. We add 4.6 grams of the substance. Notice that the level of the acetone in the graduated cylinder rose to 7.0 milliliters. When we place the substance in the acetone, it takes up space in the liquid, causing the fluid level to rise. The difference between the two volumes is 2.0 milliliters. So we know that the volume displaced by the substance is 2.0 milliliters or 2.0 cubic centimeters. After finding the volume of the substance by fluid displacement, we calculate the density by dividing the mass by the volume. We discover that the density is 2.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Now that we have conducted some tests to determine some of the properties of the unknown substance. We compare our data with the data of other researchers. That brings us to the third step in the scientific method. Formulate a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a possible answer to the question we posed in step one of the scientific method, what is this substance? The hypothesis is based on the facts we collected from our research experimentation and observation. During our research, experimentation and observation, we found that the physical properties, such as color, solubility, pH, and density of our unknown substance closely match the properties of copper sulfate pentahydrate. Therefore, we can make our hypothesis, which is the unknown crystalline substance is copper sulfate pentahydrate. Now that we have formulated a hypothesis, we come to the fourth step in the scientific method, which is test the hypothesis. We must now conduct more experiments to either support or reject our hypothesis. Let's begin with a flame test. To conduct a flame test, we hold a crystal of the substance in the flame of the Bunsen burner. According to our data, when copper sulfate pentahydrate is added to the flame, the flame should burn with a green-yellow color. As we can see, the flame turns a green-yellow color. This test alone is not sufficient to prove the unknown substance is copper sulfate pentahydrate because other substances also cause a flame to turn a similar color. We should also conduct a dehydration test. Dehydration is the process of removing water from a substance. Look at the chemical formula for copper sulfate pentahydrate. Notice that part of the formula is 5H2O. This means that water molecules are contained in the formula for copper sulfate pentahydrate. By heating copper sulfate pentahydrate crystals in an evaporating dish, we can cause the water to evaporate. As the water evaporates, the crystals will turn white. 
When all the water has evaporated, only a residue of white, crystalline substance remains. This is consistent with anhydrous copper sulfate. To be absolutely certain this is anhydrous copper sulfate, we should perform one final test. We will rehydrate the crystals by adding water back into the anhydrous copper sulfate. By adding water to the white anhydrous substance, the crystals turn blue again. From our research, we learned that copper sulfate is the only compound that turns blue when it is hydrated, which supports our hypothesis that this is, indeed, copper sulfate pentahydrate. If the tests we performed had not supported our hypothesis, we would return to step three of the scientific method. We would analyze our data again, conduct more experiments, and formulate a new hypothesis. Since the experiments supported our hypothesis, we can conclude that our hypothesis is valid. Since our hypothesis is valid, we continue to the next step of the scientific method, which is draw a conclusion and formulate a theory. A theory is a general principle or solution that attempts to explain a problem based on the available facts. In this case, our theory is the same as our hypothesis, that the crystalline substance is copper sulfate pentahydrate. Once we have determined that all the observable facts, research, and experimentation support our theory, it is time for the last step of the scientific method, communicate the results. Scientists may pass on their information verbally, or they may publish the information in a scientific journal. Communication allows other scientists to repeat the experiment and duplicate the results, which helps reinforce the theory. By using the steps of the scientific method, we examined the properties of an unknown substance. We then used research, experimentation, and observation to uncover its identity copper sulfate pentahydrate. The scientific method can be used for more complex problems, but it can also be applied to simpler problems, such as how to make a delicious breakfast omelet. In our next lab, we will learn about some basic lab equipment and demonstrate the importance of accuracy and precision in the lab. At this time, please proceed with the corresponding activities.